These are the plaintiffs, Tony Wiggins and Hassani Lee. Hassani says they bought a very large speaker from the defendant with the understanding they'd get their money back if they couldn't find a truck to transport it. Next day, they called the guy asking for a refund because they, in fact, couldn't find a truck. And the defendant gave them some cockamamie story that a man showed him the receipt he gave them and said he was there to pick up the speaker for them. He doesn't know what kind of scam the defendant is running, but they're suing him for $5,000 today for the cost of the speaker, gas, and pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Armando Avila. He says he sold the plaintiffs a speaker. They said their car was too small to transport it, and they'd be sending someone to pick it up. That same day, a tall guy came with the same receipt and picked up the speaker. Next thing he knows, the bank calls and says the plaintiffs are disputing the charge. They're making him out to be a bad person trying to steal their money. But he's an honest businessman who's been in business since 2007. Bottom line, their lawsuit's nothing more than an absurd shakedown. And he owes nothing. He's accused of making a lot of noise. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're Tony Wiggins and Hassani Lee, you are suing Armando Avila doing business as Master Electronics for $5,000, stemming from a purchase of a $398 speaker. Tell me what's going on. We uh, purchased a speaker from Mr. Avila. Okay, what kind of store is this? Um, a speaker store. I guess he said radio equipment and telephones, what walkie talkies. What kind of speaker was it? This was a um, a speaker with about this tall. Five. It was like the ones you would use if you was hosting a party or like something, a big gathering or something. Okay. And um, two. What were you in the market for a speaker for? Just personal use, or were you, are you a DJ? Well, like what? Was no, your... I, um, I'm a, a rapper, and okay. I was at the moment I was um, promoting a song that I had out about bullying, so I was gonna hold a function for in the park for kids and everything to come out. Okay. And we was looking for a speaker that would be bigger and wide, loud enough to like play the music for a and- okay. So, um, so was this a, a new speaker you were buying? Yeah, yes ma'am. All right, and how much did you pay for it? $399. Do you have the receipt? Yes ma'am. Okay, can I see the receipt? What's the return policy at your store? I have um, no exchange, no refund during the first 90 days of the purchase. No exchange and no refund? I'm sorry, only exchange, no refunds. <laughs> right. So during it's never a refund, just exchanges? Just exchange, exactly. When was the event at the park? Uh, we was in just getting a speaker, so we hadn't set a date for it. I was getting everything oh, okay. together. Did you ever have it? No, ma'am. Okay. So the date of the purchase of the speaker is February 9th? Yes, ma'am. All right, and it says no refund, only exchange during 90 days of warranty. Okay, so then what happens? Um, Mr. Um, Avella, we made a deal. The speaker actually is more than what we paid for it, but he was making an on-the-spot deal and uh, gave us a price, a good price on the speaker. And I told him that I did not have a truck to carry the speaker because it was too big to fit in my car. And I told him that I would have to get a truck to come back and get it. So I stay in Riverside, so, and it's about an hour and a half to two hours drive to um, go back and forth. So I, I told him if I wasn't able to get a truck to pick up the speaker, that I was gonna cancel the transaction. And he How would, can you do that when the receipt says, no refund, only exchange during 90 days of warranty with a big old stamp? Because um, we didn't have that receipt at the time we made the deal. When we made the deal, he clearly said, but the guy's a, is a, he, a fast talker, and the first thing he's trying to sell How a speaker. How fast can it be? The thing is, like, you know, he's trying to sell a it's speaker. the biggest thing on the receipt, and it says it's not like tiny writing on the bottom of a cash register receipt. It's like True. a big old, like, in your face, smack you right in the face. No, we refund didn't have that change. receipt at the time when he made the deal. That was okay, after. but then you had this receipt. You left after. the place with this receipt. Why didn't you stop right there and say, whoa, 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 what's this? This isn't what we talked about. Put your initials next to here. Let's wave it. You know, Yana, when I talked to Mr. Ovella, he told me. 
I will let you, if you can't get a truck since that. you have to drive. I have a different question than that. You've already said that. You're telling me that, watch this. Are you watching? Did you ever tell them they could cancel the transaction? No. Why did you have to think? Yes. You like looked up exactly. and exactly. to the right. Why was that? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell them. Did you, did someone else tell them? No, we never do that. Okay, so do, when you see this receipt before you leave, because you have it before you leave, right? Yes, ma'am. Do you say anything about this? Yes, ma'am. What do you say? If we don't be able to get the truck, could we get our money back? Would you take council transaction? No problem, was his words, no problem. Do you have a receipt where this is crossed off? No. No, ma'am. Okay, ma so what happens? We couldn't get a truck. I called him the next Why day. Why couldn't you get a truck? Because we was going to rent a truck coming out of Riverside, and they did not have one available. But why didn't you just rent a truck the day after that? Because you don't even have a date for the event that you were talking about. No, we was at in the that time. It was too much to rent that truck. Okay, that's with an miles. answer. Okay, with so miles it was too, to go from you LA felt that to it was Riverside. going to cost too much, so it was not cost it, beneficial. Correct. Okay. And after that, um, I, I called his girlfriend. Answered the phone, and um, she said that she relayed a message to him too tell him that we were not going to get the speaker and to refund that transaction. Okay. We never heard from him, so I called Chase Bank and tried to contest it. it and the you lost that c contest because they sent the receipt. Because he sent the receipt and he's saying that we took the speaker with us on the same day. Okay. And we did not. All right. You have a very different story about what transpired, correct? Tell me what you say happened. Okay, what happened is... Uh, Mrs. Uh, Tony Wiggins with, uh, came into the store and I purchased a speaker from, from my store, which cost $388. Uh, my salesman, who, he was the one who handled the sale to them. And then uh, I did the transaction over the counter for the credit card transaction. They said that they want to pick it up later because the card was too small. And I said, what's fine? No problem. So like after two, three hours, somebody came, a gentleman, tall guy, I do not remember he was honestly him because I have so many customers, I cannot say he was. With a copy of the receipt, pick him up the, the, the speaker. So my salesman handled to his car, that's what happens. After a Do you have an affidavit from the salesman? A statement yes, from the yes, salesman? Yes, I have a statement there. Do you have a girlfriend who answers the phone? Yes. Did she ever tell you that they were calling? Yes. When did they start calling? They start calling after they find out they couldn't take the money. That they the couldn't bank. what? They couldn't reverse the money from the credit card. That's when they <clears throat> called you? That's when they start calling. Okay, so here is an affidavit from your salesman. I'm the salesman who, so actually it's a statement, not an affidavit, it's not small. But I am the salesman who sold the speaker, and Ms. Tony Wiggins indicated that she would send somebody to pick up the speaker because it was too big to fit in her car. And in about two to three hours, a gentleman shows up with the receipt of the purchase in his hand to pick up the speaker right away. I took a brand new sealed box speaker from the store and I put it into his truck. How do you suppose that somebody had the receipt from this purchase in their hands to go and pick up the speaker? Okay, if you look on my receipt, he intentionally asked me for my driver's license. He wrote down my middle name, and he told me that if I do not present the credit card used, my driver's license, and if that was not me there picking the speaker up, he would not release it under any circumstances. And that's why he wrote down all that information. He said, even and according if my to you, you never said that, although that's what you do now. According to you, what, what you, was your policy about what? who could pick up stuff? Well, just bring the receipt, that's all. Okay. <clears throat> all I need to see is the receipt. Did you change your policy after this happened? Oh, yeah, I have to because I don't want to get in trouble anymore. I have to sign, I have to tell anybody who's picking up the stuff from, from uh, day and after to sign the paper because I don't want to have this problem. I've been in business since seven years, since 2007, it's about eight years ago. So how can be able to steal money from my customers if I live from my customers? This is ridiculous. Right. You know, they are suing me for $400 and they want $5,000 about what? Yeah, we're gonna get what? to that. I'm trying to figure out how you figure $398 <clears throat> uh, becomes 5,000. Can somebody address that? 
Um, due to the fact that we went five times from Riverside to L.A. to try to get in contact with him to catch him at the store. On the fifth time, we finally caught him at the store, and that's when we got video of, of, her, of us asking him about the speaker. Um, Let me see got, the video. I mean, I got so irate to, I mean, I was like having distressed out anxiety attacks to, I actually went to the ER because I honestly thought I was having a little heart attack or something. I got really stressed out, as you can hear on my rate on the video, because it's just like, I just can't believe. You went to the ER? Yeah, for sure, for chest pains. Okay. And I did have to go back, and they told me follow up with my doctor, and I did. Did, I'm unclear on one thing. Is your position that somebody who showed the receipt that your employee tells you, because it's the employee who gave it, right? It was the employee who gave the speaker to whoever picked it up? Yes. You were not present when I that, was. you were present. I was present. So did you see somebody see. come? Exactly. Did you ever see the receipt? Yeah, you got the yellow paper in the hand. Yes. He came into the store. He showed the receipt, my cell phone was, I was. You, and at yeah. that time, did you have that person sign anything or no? No. We just required a copy of the receipt, that's all. And welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here, as we told you yesterday. Uh, we are in Los Angeles, um, and we decided to do this uh, with the TMZ Celebrity Tour Bus, because we figured we'd talk to people who are from all over the country, maybe in the world, about our cases. So the first one. So they say they had this big, big speaker that they wanted delivered, but there was a condition of a truck, right? But there's nothing on the receipt that says anything about we're going to cancel the deal if there's, you can't find a truck big enough. I think you should always get something in writing. Well, they didn't get it in writing, but they say orally the guy promised. Is that enough? Uh, no, it's not enough. Why? It's, it's no proof. Like, I mean, he, he didn't say anything on the paper. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say anything on the paper, but can't you ever have like an oral understanding to something? Unfortunately not. It, I believe that there should always be some type of written agreement as well. You guys are super serious. <laughs> God, it's about a speaker for crying out loud, going inside the courtroom. I know that if I order something on the internet to be picked up at Bed Bath & Beyond or Home Depot, the, one of the questions, and I know that you're a small shop, you're not Bed Bath & Beyond and Home Depot, but the questions that they ask is, are you picking it up? And if you're not, what is the name of the person you're sending to pick it up? Um, obviously you are taking better care of how you release things uh, from now on because this came up and that's how, Sorry. that's not something that a court is allowed to hold against somebody. In other words, we want people to make improvements in business, so a subsequent remedial measure is not something that courts hold against people who take subsequent remedial measures. Um, but I, I, I can look at it and say, man, this is crazy. How do you not have whoever's picking up a $400 item sign something saying they're picking up a $400 item? And the only way I know to, to resolve this is, is to look at you and say that you should have had better records, that you can't just say, hey, somebody picked it up. Somebody who had the receipt picked it up. Um, you really have to have better records than that if, if, if it's somebody else than the person who purchased it. So, live and learn, right? But I'm gonna order you to return the $398 to them, not all this other stuff. That's my verdict. Right, 
So the gavel comes down on the plaintiff's side. They didn't get everything they sued for, but you did lose. What's, what's your reaction to this outcome? Well, um, that's what can I say? I'm very disappointed. Um, since what? that thing happens, I've been taking every, every, everybody who's speaking about merchandise, sign, check it out the ID. So I Date. put a new set of cameras, so make sure everything is done right. All right. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, Thank you. that's a man who's learned his lesson. Step on in. And tell me what you're thinking about, what you got out of this. Um, we, we're professional people. We care about ourselves in a professional manner. And we know not to fool with or do business with somebody that is a fast talker. Harvey? Okay, no, well look, the plaintiffs won this case, but I gotta tell you, if you ever have a promise made that's a condition to a sale or a warranty or a guarantee or anything like that, get it in writing on the receipt or on the contract.